Hi guys, I wanted to uh, do a short power pres uh, PowerPoint presentation on VO2 max, and I know most of you are familiar with VO2 max, but is it really the best predictor of endurance performance? And we're going to talk specifically about cycling, all right? But is it the best predictor of endurance performance? And it's been a, a widely held uh, belief that it is, but it may not, and uh, for reasons that I I will explain um, next. So. The answer is yes and no, that VO2 max is a measure of the ability to take in, transport, and utilize oxygen, but do you know anyone that's won a gold medal for their ability to utilize oxygen? And so in other words, did we test individuals and whoever had the highest number on the VO2 max test won a gold medal? No, I don't know of any such an event. So the important thing characteristic is that VO2 max test in and of itself is not a measure of endurance, which do win gold medals. It is not a measure of power, or for example, your FTP, which do win gold medals. Ultimately, it's not a measure of performance. Okay? So you're saying, well, why should we even do it? Because what a VO2 max does test does is it gives you an, a clearer picture in terms of your metabolism. All right? And, and specific uh, points in your metabolism or on or during a VO2 max test have a very strong positive correlation with performance. And so instead of getting a, a estimate in terms of a power number, because let's see, let's look, take a look at our zones, right? Tempo is 76 to 90% FTP. Sweet spot is 90 to 95% FTP, right? You get the picture. You got huge differences in terms of percentages of power, right? So when we get, when we do a VO2 max test and we get the gas exchange data, we can say, oh, this, this phenomenon, in other words, your lactate threshold occurred at this power. So we can get an exact number. And so when you go out there and you train, you say, okay, I know that training at this power number is going to get, is going to train this specific, um, characteristic like lactate threshold to the best of, of your ability, right? Instead of a range, right? So power uh, ranges, zones and all that stuff is simply, you know, an estimate, right? And so VO2 max test can identify these, uh, these factors much better, okay? Um, also performance, like I said, VO2 max is not a performance test, but performance is usually uh, a component of all of these factors, right? So VO2 max test will give you a, a clear picture of these factors which tie into performance, which is arterial venous oxygen difference or maximum aerobic, aerobic capacity, your maximum steady state lactate or your onset of blood lactate accumulation, which I'm gonna give you a, an approximate value, right? But again, only the test itself is going to be able to give you a, an exact number. It's going to be around your FTP. Lactate threshold is approximately around 85 to 90% FTP in trained individuals. In untrained individuals, it can be far lower. Okay, it can be 25, 30% lower. And same thing with fat max, right? So fat max is going to occur slightly below your lactate threshold. So that's, that's the point at which you're maximizing as much fat as possible. And if you go over this intensity, it's going to start to drop off and you're going to utilize more carbohydrates, right? So this occurs slightly below your lactate threshold. Uh, but again, since lactate threshold varies so much, 25, 30% amongst trained and untrained individuals, this also is going to vary to the same degree. Okay. And so just giving yourself a zone really is, you know, it can, that zone can, can be as great as 50 Watts, right? From the, from the bottom to the top. So a VO2 max test is going to give you an, a, a definite number, right? And so your ability to train these zones, which um, are factors in, to performance is very important. So, and remember that ultimately, if you want to have a great performance, right? Or you want to adapt to the best of your ability, um, that you must stress these, these, uh, mechanisms. All right. You must train your ability to utilize fat to your best of your ability, right? You must train your lactate threshold, right? To be able to raise your 
sustainable uh, uh, power threshold, right? You must train your, what's called your MS or your FTP, MSSL or OBLA, right? Because this is your race pace intensity, right? You must train your VO2 because this is your ceiling, your aerobic ceiling, right? To which all of this falls below. All right, so if we do a VO2 max test, we can get an, an exact number, right? And so that the adaptations that occur should be at a, a, a better value, right? So training to specific metabolic factors rather than performance data, which are merely estimates like zones and can vary greatly, okay? Now, we can use a VO2 type test in which I want, I'll call the endurance power ramp test and why, why this is better for, uh, for VO2 max in terms of uh, correlating with performance is because it's a performance test itself, right? So it measures performance of which the following factors are incorporated, aerobic capacity, lactate threshold, anaerobic capacity, and one's ability to suffer slash pain tolerance. Okay, all of these are factors in terms of endurance or how long you last on such a, on such a test. But of course, aerobic capacity is going to be the cake, all right? And then the lactate threshold, anaerobic capacity, and the suffering pain tolerance are gonna be the frosting on that cake. And so you have to have, hey, this is an aerobic sport, all right? You have to have a robust aerobic system and a, ro a robust cake to have anything significant, all right, in terms of uh, performance in an endurance sport. These other items can help push you over the top, all right, help push you over the top, icing on the cake, right, and that if you develop each one of these to its fullest potential, all right, you will have your, your last the longest on this endurance power ramp day. So, I'll give you an example. We have two individuals who have the identical aerobic capacities, but one individual has a higher lactate threshold, has a higher anaerobic capacity, and have a higher suffering pain tolerance, and therefore lasts longer than the individual that doesn't, right? So again, all of these can be incorporated into this test, and then that, all these factors, as you well know, are, are uh, very important factors in terms of performance, right? But again, this is an endurance test, which is a, a measure of performance in, in and of itself. So what are we looking at in terms of the best of the best? So the typical end stage uh, power on a ramp test to mass ratios, right? So we, got, we have to relate this to your body mass because gravity has an effect on performance, right? And especially if we go uphill. So what are we looking at in terms of professional cyclists or so professional road cyclists? They're around, uh, on average, 6.1 watts per kilo. Climb, uh, or you are climbers, if you will, uh, around 6.5. Professional mountain bikers, close to climbers. So they do a lot of climbing, right? So 6.4 watts. And uh, if you want to get an idea in terms of Chris Froome, if you take his end-stage ramp power numbers and you relate them to his tour to France body mass, he was at 7.7, .7, right? And so these, these are average values in terms of professionals, right? But I wanted to point out one thing, and that fat mass isn't an active or a truly active contributor to power output, right? So, you know, if you have 10% body fat versus 5% body fat, it's not gonna add anything significant in terms of power on a ramp test. So really the best way to determine your performance would be to relate your watt value to your lean body mass, right? Active musculature or the lean body mass, which is harder to change, right? Bone mass, so on and so forth. But what we wanna see is really how efficient, how economical your lean tissue is, your muscle mass, right? So how, what is its, um, how efficient is it in terms of making watts, right? And the more efficient a given amount of mass of muscle mass, excuse me, a given amount of muscle mass is, right, the more watts you're going to get per kilogram. And as you can see here, Chris Froome is, if not the, definitely one of the most efficient, right? He's pretty much skin and bones, very little muscle, but he makes a lot of watts. All right, so I hope this, uh, this little presentation uh, helped explain things, um, you know, why a VO2 max test is good. 
and then but why just the ramp test in itself is is good as well in terms of actually being more uh, relative to going out there and racing performance itself. All right, take care.